about death, death is such an ineffable, ineffable feeling of crossing the boundary from this world to the next. This ineffable feeling that we have in your heart, in your mind, is something that cannot be described. The feeling that, this this ineffable feeling of crossing the boundary. It cannot even be imagined in one's mind let alone be felt in the heart of mankind. But they say among the Mufassirin, the Quran experts, they have said that the only people, Allahu Akbar, the only people that truly know the reality of Mawt are those who are now 60 under. They are the only people who truly, 101%, they know and they have experienced and witnessed the terrifying onslaught of Malak al maut and his 70,000 angels that followed him to extract a ruh, one ruh from one person. They are the only ones who know the reality. Who are those who know the realities of Jahannam? <laughs> those who are in their qabr, who are in azab. They are being heavily punished in their graves. They are the ones that have an idea of what is to come for them in Jahannam. Those of the pious, those pious men and women, they are the ones who have somewhat of a reality of what is for them after the day of Qiyam. So we cannot really understand that. But our closest we can get is what we obtain from the Qur'an. And what we have read from the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Imam Ghazali, in his Kitab Zikr al Maut, in the book of the Remembrance of Death, listen to this introduction. Listen, just listen to this introduction of Imam Ghazali. Alhamdulillah, alladhi fatwama bil mawti riqab al jababir. Glory and all praise is due to Allah who has smashed the necks of the tyrants. The Khosrows and the Caesars, the leaders of the Persians from many, many years ago, 
and the Caesars who dwelt and lived a life of luxury, what did Allah do? He smashed their necks. وَكَسَرَ بِهِ الظُّهُورِ الْأَكَاسِرَ وَقَصَرَ بِهِ الْآمَالِ الْقِيَاصَرَ الَّذِينَ لَمْ تَزِلْ قُلُوبُهُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الْمَوْتِ فَارِدًا And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala broke them apart. He broke the leaders, the jababira, the dictators. And he shortened their hopes in this world because of their heedlessness. They were very heedless of the remembrance of death. حتى جاءهم الوعد الحق until the true promise arrived at their door the yaqeen what is the yaqeen death death is the only certainty in this world my dear brothers in islam فارداهم في الحافره and allah threw them into pit allah threw them into hole فانقلوا من القصور الى القبور And they were moved from their palaces to their graves. وَمِنْ ضِيَاءِ الْمَهْوَدِ إِلَى ظُلُمَةِ الْلُحُودِ from, from the lights of their cradles, they were moved from the lights of their cradles to the darkness of the pit. وَمِنْ مَلَاعِبَةِ الْجَوَارِ وَالْغُلْمَانِ إِلَى مَقَافَةِ الْهَوَامِ وَالْدِيدَانِ And from their joyful enjoyment, the enjoyment that they had in this world, playing with young children, girls and boys, women, so much enjoyment they had, they moved from that to their company with vermin and pests in their qabr. This is the reality of death. وَمِنَ التَّنَعُمِ بِالطَّعَامِ وَالشَّرَابِ And from a life of luxury, drinking and eating, life of luxury, to the rolling in their graves. What do they have for food in their qabr? Nothing but turab, nothing but soil. وَمِنْ أُنْسِ الْعَشْرَ إِلَىٰ وَحْشَةِ الْوَاحِدَةِ From splendid company they had. So much company, so much enjoyment, enjoyment. To what? To a ghastly loneliness in their heart. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful introduction. وَمِنَ الْمَضْجَعْ الْوَثِيرِ إِلَى الْمَصْرَعِ الْوَبِيلِ From their comfortable beds and their blankets made, made of silk to the harmful lying places beneath the earth. And Imam Ghazali says, فَانْظُرْ هَلْ وَجَدُوا مِنَ الْمَوْتِ حَصْنًا وَعِزًّا Did they find a protector? Were they safe from the coming of moat? They were not saved. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Maryam, and I love this ayah, I normally read it every mother. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنِ Allah reminds Sayyiduna Muhammad to remind us, that's the reality. To remind his habib, to remind us. وَكَمْ أَهْلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ مِنْ قَرْنِ The last ayah of Surah Maryam. And how many previous nations did we destroy? هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ Have you heard from them? Have you heard from these dictators? Have you heard from Caesar? Have you heard from the leaders, the Khosrow? Or the Khusran? Have you heard from these people? أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ رِكْزًا Have you even heard a whisper from them? Allahu Akbar Kabira. So subhanallah rabbil arsh al Oh glory be to Allah, the Lord of the throne. Multitudes and thousands of men is going to be an introduction on death today. Next week we're going to be going into more detail. Some people, um, they, they get confused as to what is the nafs and what is the ruh. What happens to the ruh at the time of death and after death? What is this concept of 40 days from the sunnah and from the athar, from the sayings of the sahaba al-kiram? Multitudes of men have walked upon the face of this earth. All these people, they belong to different nations and they belong to different tribes. A few of these people made history for which they are remembered. Whereas others were never ever mentioned again. 
although each one was personally different from the other, their habits, their way of thinking, their taste differed, their color differed, their language differed, we all had two things in common. We all had a mother. Each and every one of us exited from the wounds of our mother. And the second is that they all tasted death. Everyone will have to taste death. Who is there in the history of mankind who claimed to live for over 1,000 years? Not even Nabi Nuh alayhi salam lived to a thousand years. Alfa sana illa khamsina aam. One thousand years take away fifty years. Nine hundred and fifty years Sayyiduna Nuh alayhi salam lived upon this earth. Allah Shaykh Jalaluddin al Suyuti rahmatullahi alayhi has recorded the verdict of the entire ulama of the Ahl Sunnah that mawt is not a mere annihilation but it is a type of metamorphosis a shift from one place to the other where the soul is separated from the body like the movement from one dwelling to another place this is in the book Sharq al-Sudur by Imam Jalaluddin al-Suyuti we find it many things he said a believer's death a mu'min's death his mouth has been explained beautifully by some ulama as the transference from a world of hardship to a world of luxury and enjoyment. The shifting of a believer's soul. You ask about how did death come about? When did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create death? We look in the book of Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal in his Musnad. And also this is recorded in his Kitab al-Zuhd. Now bear in mind that Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, whenever he would record a hadith, he would look and study at the chain of transmission. And nearly every single hadith that Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal radiallahu ta'ala an had recorded is authentic. This is, this is in his book Al-Kitab al-Zuhd. Everything that is in the book of Kitab al-Zuhd is of great importance. So he takes the wordings of Sayyiduna al-Imam Hassan al-Basri. Imam Hassan al-Basri radiallahu ta'ala an. He said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam and his progeny, the family of Adam, all the angels expressed a lot of concern that the world in which we live in would be insufficient to accommodate all of us. So the matter was taken to Allah. وَرَبُّنَا أَعْلَمْ And our Lord knows. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and declared to the angels, Then I shall create death. This is from the hadith of Ibn Abi Shayba. Ibn Abi Shayba was at the pinnacle of the mastery of hadith in the time of the Salaf al-Salihin. Hearing this, not over yet, hearing this, the angels became disturbed. And when they remarked that it would instill fear and remove the pleasure of life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to the malaika, so be it, I shall create hope in the hearts of men and ambitions in the hearts of men. Subhanallah. Hence we have the life in which we, have, we are living in today. We all have hope. We all have ambitions in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we have too much hope. Too much hope and too much ambition. Not for the akhirah but only for the dunya a person who adopts such an attitude becomes completely odious of mold he becomes completely oblivious he doesn't even take the time to think about death when he is reminded about death he becomes odious to it Allah because of his attachment that he has with the world too much attachment less preparation for mold According to Sayyiduna Hazrat Mujahid radiallahu ta'ala an wa rahmatullahi alayhi when Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam was sent to the, to, was sent to the earth his sustainer Allah al-Jabbar said to him O oh Adam construct buildings destined for destruction and re, re, um, construct buildings for the buildings to be destined for destruction they're going to be destroyed but ya Adam 
always forget this. Always remember this. And always remember that the building that you construct is due for destruction. This is in the Hulya of Imam Abu Nu'aym. It's also mentioned that the Khabar speaks on a daily basis to the entire humanity. This is recorded in the Hadith. Do you know what your Khabar says? Your Khabar. Your Khabar has already been decreed. Whether it be here in the UK or as far as China. Allahu A'la. Allah knows. Your, you do not know where your appointed time will come. That that earth in which you will return to, from which you were created from, wherever it was from on the face of this earth, your khabar speaks to you on a daily basis, but you hear not. This is one of the reasons why the Holy Prophet ﷺ said, if you knew what I knew, you would laugh very little and you would cry so much. He's even said in the hadith, I'm going to mention soon, that if the animals knew what the people knew about malt, you would not have the ability to eat the animal. Before you go up to the animal to, to make it zaba, to do qurbani of the animal, the animal will fall down dead in horror. This is from Imam Tirmidhi, the Sunan of Imam Tirmidhi. So the, the khabar calls out to the people on a daily basis. And the khabar shouts out to you, but you hear not. O oh, dweller of lofty mansions, verily soon you will be buried within me in a lowly station. And do not forget that Allah has appointed an angel and he says to you, beget death, remember death and create buildings for destruction. Prolonged hope, tula amal is something of a big disease that is affecting each and every one of us today. Zikr al to remember death. What, is, what did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu say about mawt? Dear brothers and my sisters in Islam, we are so engrossed in our worldly pursuit that the remembrance of death doesn't even occur to us, many of us. How many of us, just be frank to ourselves, with ourselves, how many of us think of death during the day? Not many people. Because we're so busy, we're so busy in this world, being distracted and being deceived by the greatest deceiver, shaitan's accomplice, the world itself. Sayyiduna Muhammad wasallam said, the most intelligent person is the one who most oftenly remembers his mold. Constant remembrance of death prevents one from acts of evil. And constant remembrance of death will inevitably motivate you towards good morals and good character, good conduct. Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu said, the remembrance of death defeats joy. The remembrance of death will defeat passion. The remembrance of death defeats your desires. This hadith clearly indicates that we are in this world for a purpose and not just for pleasure and enjoy and, and entertainment. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, have you forgot his words? How many times has this hadith been read to you? That live in this world as a wayfarer. Live in this world as a wayfarer. Who is a wayfarer? Who is a wabnu sabil? A wayfarer is someone who passes by and leaves. Someone who doesn't have hopes in this world. Someone who knows that his death is inevitably upon him. Can come to him at any time. But we see us building these hopes in this world. Allahu Akbar Kabir. It's sickening. It's sickening. Concerning this, Sayyiduna Isa alayhi salam has said, This world is like a sirat. This world is like a bridge. So cross the bridge. But don't ever build upon the bridge. Don't build upon this bridge. Life in this world is, is, of, is, of, is of an extreme shortness which everyone has to surpass until we will inevitably meet our mouth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for every ummah, for every community, for every nation, there is an atam, there is a term appointed for them. Which, when, when their term <coughs> is not reached, 
Not an hour nor a moment can they cause to delay or an hour nor a moment can they advance to it. Hakada Allah. Just imagine you're driving your car or just imagine you're just walking across the pavement along, alongside the pavement. A bus you see is coming in the opposite direction. Not long ago, there was a horrible incident that occurred in Berry Park in Luton. It was as if I was there in Berry Park because my friends were taking pictures <coughs> and telling me at the same time. And I was, I was shocked. I was shocked because I had daughters of my own. One mother was holding her daughter. <coughs> and just for a fraction of a second, she lost the grip of her young daughter who was five years old. Her daughter crossed the road and the bus hit her daughter. Allahu Akbar. Now just imagine, it can happen to anyone. They say that, you know, when accidents happen, you see it on CCTV footages, that the person has crossed the road, yet he sees, he looks to his right and left, but yet he crosses this road. Have you not asked yourself why? Because when your mouth has come for you to be struck by something, Allah save us and Allah give us peace and security. But when death comes, there is no escaping. This is the reality. This is the only thing we know for a surety. Nothing is known. What you're going to be when you grow up. Whether you're going to have children. Whether you're going to eat tonight. What clothes you're going to wear. This is of not of a certainty. Of a certainty. But the certainty is, is that you will have to meet Malak al maut in the face. That's a certainty. Why do we run away? Why do we run away? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْ Say, death. The death that you run away from. How are we running away? We are not, not accepting this. We accept this. But it is our attitude that we show to Allah that, tell, that shows Allah that we are in fact, in reality, running away from our mouth. Because the act of running away from our death is the lack of preparation for it. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say verily mouth, the fitruna So you're walking along the pavement. And the bus is coming in the opposite direction. What happens? The bus runs out of control. Steers out of control. Mounts the pavement and hits you bang in the face. What, are, what, is your, what is your thinking at that moment you see the bus hitting you? The bus is within yards of you. Coming at 50, 40 miles an hour. What are, what are, your, what are your thoughts at that very moment in time? Oh Allah forgive me. Some people will die upon the state of kufr because of their servitude not to Allah but to the dunya they may be Muslim but if Allah does not have mercy upon them they will die in the fitra of kufr this is not me speaking these are the words of the Ahl salaf the salaf of salihin what do we do then? Allah the first thought that will come into your mind when your ruh is being extracted some people have this misconception that when someone gets hit by a bus or a car and he's there on the floor and his heart has stopped, that's it, he is there. Beautiful mold. <laughs> that's what they say. What a beautiful death. His soul left his body. La 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 la. No. What does Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops time for that individual. You are still within the boundaries of the conception of time. But for the mayyit, for the person who has just been hit, he is still, time is, time is being frozen for him. His soul is being extracted, whether his heart is beating or not, his soul is still being extracted. You have to understand this, we'll be speaking about this in more detail in many weeks to come, inshaAllah, bi Have you ever thought about these things? Allahu Akbar Kabira. How much do we, as the community of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Remember Mawq Nowadays What do we see? I've seen it When a person dies The family And the relatives They all get together And they grieve over the deceased After some time What happens? All is forgotten It's as if they've never witnessed anything before But much attention Is not given to the death But more attention Is given to the Inheritance more attention is given to money. 
Who's going to get this money from his father? I'm more entitled to him than she is to it. Allahu Akbar. So much that they begin to have disputes over it. They start to quarrel among themselves. I have seen it in my own eyes. And I have brothers coming up to me complaining about this. Allahu Akbar, as an Imam, I am telling you this. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. The wealth of the deceased is valued more than the lessons to be taken from his death. Allahu Akbar. If we remembered it frequently, we would certainly prepare for death. So my dear brothers in Islam, death is something which is inevitable. It can strike everyone, anyone, anyone, wherever you are. Even if you are situated on the highest mountain, death will come to you. Even if you surround yourself with walls of thick lead, Allahu Akbar, Malikul Mawk will come and instruct your soul. It is the only thing we can never be certain of when death will arise. Allahu Akbar, when we are introduced into this world, we were born to die. But understand this, that death is the beginning of our, the, of our journey. It's like, a, it's like a dive into a wormhole, into a, separate, into a separate dimension of existence. From the dunya to the spirit world, to the alami barzah. The journey began when we were all in our mother's womb. 100 and, 120 days after we were conceived after conception Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the ruh to be blown into the feet and since then our journey has begun some say that this is the, this is the real life no my brother the real life begins at your mouth the real life begins at the time of your death <laughs> let's just finish through for the next five minutes I like to keep these lectures concise inshallah don't like to let these lectures drag because I remember, you know, ask any <laughs> university student that when the lecture is going on and on and on for about an hour, after 20 minutes people tend to, um, tend to start losing interest. 20 minutes. But let's look at the words of Rasulullah wasallam regarding mawt, the remembrance of death, the fadl, the excellence of remembering death. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أكثروا من ذكر من ذكر هذا من لذات. Remember death. Remember your mouth excessively, for it destroys desire. Remember the destroyer of your desires. And the Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is the destroyer of desires? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Mawd, the death. Wa qala Rasul, wa qala Aisha, on the authority of Lady Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Ya Rasulullah, this is something you can learn today inshaAllah. Allah bless us all. He said, Ya Rasul, she said, Ya Rasulullah, hal yahshuru ma'a shuhadahi ahadun? Will anyone be resurrected among the martyrs on the day of Qiyamah? You know the martyrs are of, of, of a great darajah in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who die in the way of Allah. Great darajah. Allah has elevated their status from within the Qur'an. So she's asking, Ya Rasulullah, will anyone be resurrected among the martyrs? He said, alayhi salatu wa salam, said, Naam, yes. مَنْ يَذْكُرُ الْمَوْتَ فِي الْيَوْمِ وَالْلَيْلَةِ عِشْرِينَ مَرَّةِ Yes, the ones who will be resurrected among the martyrs on the day of Qiyamah are those who used to remember death 20 times during the day and night. Allahu Akbar. وَإِنَّمَا سَبَبٌ هَذِهِ الْفَضِيلَةِ What is the reason for this? Why will you be given so much honor? On the day of Qiyamah, you're going to be in the company, fi Zumrat al-Shuhada. You're going to be, they're going to hold your hand. The martyrs of the Battle of Badr, of Uhud, of Tabu, of all these battles our Muslim brothers, the Sahabas went through. They're going to be holding your hands and walking with you to the plains of, 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 of resurrection. Why? Because you used to remember death 20 times a day. What's the reason for this? 
أن ذكر الموت يوجب التجاف عن دار الغروب because what does the remembrance of death do to you? It causes a sense of desertion from the dunya. The things you would love that your heart was inclined to is no longer there because you are more interested in preparing for your death. But how can we, when you think of death, what do you think about? Just the grave, the lahad, the grave, and the pieces of wood, and your kafan, Allahu Akbar. If you were to hear the horror, that Allahu Akbar, Allah save us all, that people are incurring as we are speaking today, Allahu Akbar, it would be enough for you to say well away from the dunya, the pleasures of this world. It will cut off your carnal desires and it, you will give more preference to the akhirah. And as for heedlessness of death, you are heedless of remembering death. What happens? It invites to the involvement of desires for the dunya. It invites you to do more things that are haram, which are displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم we finish it with one more saying of Sayyiduna Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said تحفة المؤمن الموت the gift the present you know when someone gives you a gift you would always have a smile on your face you know when you buy a gift for your, for your, for your little ones at home for your little brothers your little nieces your little nephews you would always see them full of excitement, full of joy. But the joy, the gift, the best gift, a believer, a mu'min, not a Muslim, but a mu'min, a true genuine believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best gift of a believer is mawt, is death. Why is that so? Let's see what it says here. Well, Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this, because the dunya is like a prison for the believer. These are from the words of Rasulullah. As dunya sijnul mu'min. The world is but a prison for the believer. It's a prison for the believer. Because why? What does a believer do all his life? What does he do? Does he go jet skiing? Does he go in, does he interact with the opposite sex? Does he does he, um, ent- does he entertain his appetites on a daily basis? The believer doesn't do all that. The believer continuously persists in suffering. He persists in suffering the difficulty of resisting his desires and his appetites. He's in a prison. He can do it. Allah has a, ha- gave him a hand to do haram. Allah gave him eyes to see haram. But he is resisting this. It's a great difficulty for the believer. But because of his love and his fear for Allah, he resists it. It's very bitter. It's like the shaitan tries to tempt them from drinking from a cup of bitterness. But they throw that cup of bitterness away. Allahu Akbar. They don't want to taste. What shaitan makes them deceive, they deceive. Shaitan deceives these people in thinking that this is not bitter, but this is sweet. But they prefer to drink from bitter, from bitterness. This is why the believer, the gift, is death for a believer. Because why? Imam Ghazali says beautifully, فَالْمَوْتُ إِطْلَاقُ لَهُ مِنْ هَذَا الْعَذَابِ Because mawt is for him nothing but a freedom. It's a freedom from all these torments and all these difficulties. Well, itlaqu and this freedom is a gift in reality for a believer. May Allah make us all believers. May Allah make us all mu'mineen. Allahu Akbar. Because when Allah, the difference between a Muslim and a mu'min, a Muslim is someone who has embraced Islam. Someone who says, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. But a mu'min, who is a mu'min? الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe in the unseen وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ And they pray their salah on time وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ And they give their charity 
والمؤمنون والمؤمنات بعضهم أولياء بعض سورة التوبة The believers to the believers they are nothing but friends among themselves Allah continues and he said أولئك سيرحمهم الله Allah's mercy is upon them The believers are of a different category They are, they are of a different darajah than that of a mere Muslim May Allah make us mu'mineen We'll end it inshallah with a short zikr Inshallah many brothers have been sent to the zikr that we'll do